Yes. Yeah. Right. Yep. Okay. All right. So um, thanks for making time to be here today, guys. Uh, obviously, we would ideally be there in person. Um, it's a pain in the proverbial for everyone. As Paul rightly said, um, the key is, it would, is this is about you guys. It's about your crops. It's about your paddocks. It's about your profits. And what we're here to do today is, is for us to try and share some stuff and share with you and get your feedback so that um, you, can, you can put more, more money in your pocket. That, that's the end game. Um, what I'm going to go through is I'm going to talk about harvest loss uh, and harvest loss measurement and um, just give you a little bit of an overview of why. I'm stealing here some slides from Pete Newman, who you, I think most of you guys will know. He did a harvest loss um, bit of study back in 2018. And um, I'm gonna share some of the things he was doing uh, and um, uh, also then put some other stuff up of who's collaborated and some other results we've got. Um, so what I want to ask first, Paul, is can we just ask who's actually measuring losses, either out the front or out the back? Who's doing that? You want to hear that question, please? Measuring losses, front or the back? The front or out the back? Anyone doing measuring? I think so. Even on means and hands and all that stuff. No one? Yeah, everyone eyeballs. Anyone? I think there's a general concession that we eyeball it, Peter. Yeah. So yep. an eyeball it, you walk along after the head has gone past and have a look, correct? Okay, bit of a bit of a scratch, bit of a look. Okay, so we're doing we're doing the traditional uh, scratch and look at idea. Okay, that's that's pretty pretty normal. Where where that's what goes on. Um, let's keep going. So what I want to do is just share some stories with you. So in terms of some of the things we've seen out there, and this is uh, a grower who is in Morawa in um, West Australia. He was. Uh, in a canola crop and he in his first test so this is Newm's doing a measure using a drop pan system and I'll talk a little bit more about that shortly and we'll you know Paul will demonstrate that but this drop pan system enabled them to capture seven rotor loss and he was losing 286 kilograms per hectare of canola and that is 2018 and that number um, is a big lot of dollars by dropping the fan only over three tests, three tests, 10, 15 minutes, by, we managed to, okay, so who, who, who's, buying the, who's buying the slab? I don't know. So, yeah, must, must be someone. Me. <laughs> Excellent. Me. Yeah, good on you, Warwick. Um, so he looked on his program, basically, that's $58,000 he, he, he saved by just changing his fan. The issue was he didn't know how to do it. If he hadn't measured, he wouldn't know. It's not just about the straight savings in terms of losses though. This example I'm showing you is, is a farmer in uh, WA, small farmer, as a small time farm in terms of what he's got, but he's still doing a one and a half to three ton canola crop. And uh, having done the first test, he then speeded up. He increased his, ton, his tonne through rate but it increases losses. When we first see that, we go, oh, more losses. But actually what it did, the second test shows us very clearly that in his 1,200 ton of crop he's got to do, so uh, while his losses were high in his three ton crop, he actually was saving hours of head of time, okay? So he saved roughly 49 hours of head of time, which you pay for that header to be out there and, um, the costs of running those headers, uh, I think, Brett, what are we saying? The cost of running a header is per hour now, about 500? Depending on how big the header is, but yeah, five to 750. So I, I hope that you heard that. What well, Brett's saying, it's about five to 750. So he's talking 24 grand by reducing the hours, I've got to have my header out there. So it, it's about understanding to make that performance call. Here is another grow. Um, uh, who was facing an issue in their uh, red header where they were losing roughly around 6%, doing a number of tests to then drop the fan speed, one change, dirtied up the sample, made the change to the top sieves, changed the top sieve setting, tested again, dropped the rotor, tested again, went from six down to 
2%. If you get to 2%, that's the benchmark in your canola there. 25 grand on his program. Here's a wheat scenario in a yellow header. Here is a guy who was doing a four ton crop, uh, doing about nine Ks an hour, and they were losing over $699 an hour. So that's telling us if I'm losing that amount of money per hour, it's worth me spending 15 minutes just to try and make this better. So having done a couple of changes, dropped the fan, opened the sieves, constant speed, they saved $69 per hectare. Big deal. Here's one of, I know it's one of Newm's favorites. Here's a guy who was out doing barley and he was texting, uh, tweeting Newm's on harvest, at Harvest Loss, the Twitter handle. And he had gone out in his New Holland header and he was losing about half a ton of, of uh, barley out the back in, a, in what was what, a three and a half odd ton crop. So really a four ton crop. The thing was though, these were the settings he had when he finished last year's barley. So he was using the same, same settings and he was chucking it out. What he did was then push to say, what do I, what do I need to change to? And he pushed a couple of times and Yum said to him, no, you've got to go a little bit further. I was you know, twittering back and they got it down to less than 1%. So huge saving just by making that simple change, but also sharing with others what, what he was doing. So when you're doing your loss measurements, we've got different locations on the header we're trying to understand. So you'll see in the center of that screen, uh, a little graphic and there's a little red box there, that's putting it on the axle. You can also put it on the header front. Well, what you've got to work it out is based on, um, based on your machine. So they, they all spread slightly differently. So if it's, a, um, if it's going to be a class there, that you've got a different spread of how the uh, straw and chaff spread compared to looking at your John Deere. And that's really going to be important that we're actually making sure we understand how we're going to capture that both the sieve and the rotor loss. We can talk a little bit more about that, but the aim is we want to be able to get an understanding of that so we can make the corresponding change, okay? The system you're looking at there is the Bushel Plus system. Um, that is magnetic onto the axle you're seeing there. It's got a cover on it. And the reason you want to cover is you want to stop a negative sample, a false negative. Otherwise, the moment you move, all your, all your grains can start falling in that pan before you've moved. These are all temporary on your header. So you're putting your magnet on and then you're pulling it off because this cover on and off issue is, is important. You can't just leave it on there. Then we've got to do the really important thing, which is actually then separate it. So we need to be able to take that sample um, and be able to put that sample and weigh what we've got. So you can see in the pan there on the ground there, we, need, we have a separator that is the piece of gold um, that we use to blow out the sample. It's got a fan in. Um, and the way we use that is to take out the big bits of straw, blow it out, and then you weigh that. Because what we were trying to understand is, what have we lost? What can we see in that tray? And you'll see in that tray also the losses, not just your losses, but also your quality. Have I cracked grain? Have I got beard still on the barley, etc. So. That's what we try to do. And what Newms did is he built a calculator that's available on GRDC, good calculator. And that will enable you to take your weight you've got in your, your um, come out of your tray, you've blown out in your sample and you've weighed, um, you can then put it in the calculator. Same is true with your Bushel Plus, that's in your app on your phone. So on your phone, you've got it that you can put your settings in, You've got different, you can pick how you're separating your uh, straw and your chaff according to what you're running, and then you can uh, measure it out. The important thing then is once you've done one change is to be able to go and then make my change to my fan or my rotor and then capture my settings once I'm going, that's what I've done. Once I know what I've done, I'm going, that's what's right in these conditions, I save those settings. Now, you know, Guys I, I've spoken with and I'm stealing from other people here is what they're doing is they're going, I'll save that as my morning setting for canola. That's my afternoon setting for canola because I know it's dry and it's changed. 
and they can then go back and look at the history in terms of saying, right, that's my that's my concave settings, that's my fan setting, that's my radio setting, or something to refer to. Okay. The other thing we've got is in relation to harvest wheat seed control, which Paul and, um, and Mike, Barney and, and um, Brett will go into a bit more detail, is we've got a good reason to be doing this if you're doing harvest wheat seed control. So who, who's using or doing harvest wheat seed control at the moment? Can I get a bit of a hands up? Us people in Chuck Hart's mills bank. No, no, Peter, no, none, zero, zero, zero. Okay, who's considering doing harvest weed seed control? One, one. What are they looking to do? Sorry, what's that? What are you looking to do? What are you looking to do? Chaff tram lines. Chaff tram lines. Right. Okay. So. Whether you're doing tram lines, whether you're doing chaff lining or mills, you've got a reason to be making sure that you're measuring because you want to make sure that your weed seeds don't get blown out in the rotor. You want to make sure you're capturing it into your chaff line. And we know that that's, that's quite important in terms of what we do. Uh, um, Mike, I know you're online and, and hopefully, can you, you, would see, you did a study looking at some of the differences of what can happen there. Could you give us? Your thoughts? You talking to me, Peter, or Mike? Uh, Mike Walsh. Mike, you did a chaff versus what, versus rotor. What what are we? What did you find in terms of split? Oh, okay. So, um, well, we found a lot of variation across different machines, um, but essentially, we found when the the header setup was right that we're getting. 95% plus weed seeds coming out in the, the char fraction. Mm. There, there was a fair, you said there was, when you're doing the study, I think there was a fair difference, wasn't there, between what was ending up in the rotor versus char? Yeah, so the, the variation was between 50 and 95%. Yeah, yeah. Just based on header setup. Yep. So, so again, I guess it reinforces about how we set up the headers and how we do measurement if we're going to go down harvest weed seed control. Um, it's going to have a double benefit there. So whatever direction you're going in, if you're going to do harvest weed seed control, you need to be measuring to make sure you put more grain in your bin and your weed seeds go into the tools you buy. So NUMS, um, there's some more stories available. NUMS uh, has an article that was done through ground cover with Joe Forward. There's about four case studies in there uh, of guys going out and looking at what impact they had in terms of loss. And I know that talking to him, this was through the at harvest loss uh, handle on, on Twitter. Um, roughly the guys were feeding that they were saving around $9,000 um, per over that harvest. Um, when I chatted to him, he said, Pete, what are you, what's your thoughts on that? And I said, James, what I'm seeing is it's closer to 20 most guys are getting just by the fact they're actually looking at it for the first time. And we've got some similar stories from um, the last year's Harvester Forum. So this is out of Western Australia. The guy you're seeing on the screen, um, yeah, I think you'll know Ray Harrington. There's also some other stories of what they've saved. I know Brett will chat about what he did with Ray, but look, there's more stories showing very clearly when you measure, you can make changes to your setup that will put more in your bin. They're all the same. And Brett will, Brett, Brett's the one who tells me this. Every one of those colors is the same in terms of that you can set those up to, to run effectively and make those tools work to make sure you've got more in your bed. They all do that. And that's what we've measured and checked. What we need to be able to do, what I've brought, uh, I guess what um, we've learned, what I've learned is, is about the cost of harvest. So one of those examples I showed you was talking about cost per hour. We talked about that. And Rod Gribble um, is, that's very much what he's really clearly pushing. And that's something I, I support very strongly. And his harvest cow cat has focused on that side in terms of doing that. That's available online. And he's got some trays too that go with that. The other thing we learned is you've got, to, you've got to measure in the mode you harvest. 
So some people suggest that you should win row and then do your measure, and then go back and harvest in your other mode. But the moment you change airflow, you, you've changed how it, how it goes through the header. And if you do that, you're negating doing the measure. So you need to keep it in the same, same way you're gonna measure and measure accordingly. The good news is with your Bushel Plus app, you can do that. You can, you've got the ability to see it and, and set it accordingly, put your calculations in and capture it. Measure and one change. Rather than doing two or three things, and I'm guilty as most males of trying to do too much at once, we, we need to do one thing. So you measure it, do one change, measure it. And what the next thing people tend to ask is they go, well, how do I fit that in? Because it sounds like we've got a lot to do. The, the commentary I've had and seen and got from other growers has been, they get their chase bin driver or um, whoever's doing the support to do the test. That takes about 10, 15 minutes. The header keeps going. And you just make one change and you let them keep going. And you make the change and let them keep going. It is then setting it into your day that it becomes what we do. Then you have to go in and calibrate your monitor in terms of uh, your loss monitor. So just a heads up, who's, who knows how to calibrate their loss monitor in their uh, header? You'll know how to calculate the loss monitor in the header? No, no takers there. No, no. takers there, okay. All right, so who's who? Let's have a, why don't we do a color of header check? Because I know Brett's uh, standing next to me and he's keen to find out what color headers have we got. My favorite part red, one, two, three, four, four red, marks waving, he's sort of red. Sort of red, what's that mean? The other red, massive. Oh, massive, oh, massive. Oh, massive, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Green. One, two, three, four, five, six green, six green. Where is it? I'm sure there's another room. A couple in the shed up there. Three. Three green. Okay. That's better. Any light greens? Class. Class. Yellow. 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 Yellow is yeah. All right. So look, let's just talk. Let's talk about the reds. Um, I got a man who knows you better than I do standing next to me. So Brett, from a going into your monitor to reset your sensors, how do the guys do that? Just so they're very clear to set their uh, loss monitors. So verify your losses first, and when you are happy that they are acceptable, then you adjust your sensitivity so the monitor will read on your screen a small amount so normally they go yellow um green yellow red and you want it to be running in that green mode so if you then go and say i'm just gonna um, elevate my fan speed 20 rpm i want that monitor to go yellow okay so the idea of that is so if there's any minor change in what your losses are your monitor is going to pick it up straight away okay Okay. And your greens? Um, similar similar process, exactly mm. the same across every harvester. Yep. What what you're trying to do is you're trying to set it up in a way that it that it yes, it's reading. I can see that it's something on that screen, but it's going to change color as soon as it changes its operating state. Yep. Okay. All right. We'll keep pushing on. Yep. So who calibrates this cedar? You want to calibrate the cedar? Three operations. One mouth, two nine, three nine, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Only that. And how how often can you how often can you see if there's a if there's a, a weather event? You can go back again, can't you? Mm. Yeah. So how often can you harvest? Right. That's the cash time, and you got one chance. And all of you have gone, I'll go out the back and I'll just have a scratch. Hmm, okay. So at the door, Paul's left a bin. Can you see behind you there's a bin? I'll happily take your checks and $100 bills in there because obviously you don't need it. Because that's what you're leaving behind. Which bin are you talking about? That's a bin. That's the one you're talking about? 
loss. You're lost. You're losing out the back. If you're not going to measure properly, you're going to lose it out the back. Simple as that. So let's talk about what we're trying to do here. We're trying to not slow down. That's what we don't want to do. That's a last resort. So what the guys have done um, is, and it includes Pete Newms and Marcel from Bush Plus, they put together some targets for what you should be doing in terms of losses. So in terms of canola and small grain, we try to aim at under uh, 2%. Um, two to three is, is kind of normal kind of conditions we'd expect in a real world. In your grains, um, less than one. And in your pulses, again, less than one. Okay. Give you a bit of an idea what we're trying to do. Mice. I know we'll get probably talk a little bit about that, but just um, uh, Paul, I'm not stealing anyone's thunder here, am I? Uh, there you go, right there. You've got no mice. So, yeah, too dry. Too dry. All right, too dry. So what, what we're seeing elsewhere is it's not. We've got a lot of issues with the fact we've had mouse plagues. If you're throwing out stuff out the back, you're basically allowing um you know basically we're feeding mice they only need three and a half grams a day if you've got a two-ton crop and you're losing for every one percent on a 400 hectare program you're feeding two million mice a day so that's that's the amount of days there are so it is something we need to consider not just in terms of straight losses in the bin but what it does down the track that's it for me hopefully i'm getting reasonably close to time Done very, done very well, Peter. Extremely well. Can I, can I get some questions come to you, Peter? If you like, I'm more than happy to take them. Okay, any questions for Peter Dolly? We've always talked about that. Agree, disagree? Hand up. Happy to take the microphone, Peter. Peter's doing his rear loss. Spending his credit loss. Half covered. Oh, when you're doing your uh, rear loss on your head, yep. yep. he's disconnecting his credit. No, 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 definitely not. Because as I said, whatever you're going to go and harvest in, you want to do this exactly, exactly the same. What what header are you running? Case. Case, you've got a case, right. So you're going to do a measure, um, you're going to do a measure off your, your axles and you're going to do a measure off your header front. So you, you can attach it to those. I can tell you that what we then do, uh, I've probably got, again, someone on my left who could probably respond better than me, is what we found is you do a measure um, off the axles will give us both sieve and rotor loss, but then I'll go and look at what um, I'm getting off my front by measuring separately there. So Brett, you got any comment to the guys on that? Measuring with a case, can they turn off the choppers? The, what, the key thing that you want to remember is if you change anything, you alter the airflow through the back of the machine. So you want it to operate exactly in the way that you are operating in the paddock. The challenge being, if we are going to, if we're going to try and differentiate between what is rotor loss and what is sieve loss, we need to actually divide that. So normally the only change that I would make is I would pop the windrow door at the back of the machine open just to windrow that little bit of straw for this for the period that I want to do my loss test. So I'll do two tests. I'll do one with the whole lot, which is going to give me uh, rotor and sieve loss. And then I'm just going to pop the windrow door open so that the straw goes out, my rotor goes straight out the back of the machine and I'm going to measure that in the tray. And that'll tell me the difference between the two. What um, uh, one grower, Nigel Norwood did, he, we did a measure off his axles. Uh, and then he opened the sieves completely yeah. and did another measure because uh, he was super, you know, super aware. He went, this is rotor loss, I'm getting off my case. So yeah. he was running a case yeah. and that was in canola. What he then did was go, yeah, I've got rotor loss and then went, stop, pull off the um, concaves and put bigger wires in. So mm. Yeah, open them up. Open it up, yeah. Mm. Yeah, there's a lot of things to, every, to set up and just what you have to remember, guys, is that, you know, you can you can play around with sieve settings and all those sorts of things, but 99% of your losses start at the front of the machine, not on the, the head of front, but at, at the front of the rotor itself. And so that's where you've got to look for a lot of these things. So, so if you've got rotor loss, you've got to go all the way back to the front and go, okay, I've got a problem in either my concave config or my setup uh, between my rotor and my concave. Yeah. 
that answer your question? Well, uh, to, to put it on a front axle, on the, on the head that I've got, the tray for your back of the sieves is behind the axle and your spread is behind that again. I don't have a top row of spread. Yeah. So if, you put it, if you were going to put that magnetic tray on the front axle, it's, it's, all, it's underneath everything. It's not, it's, you're not going to catch anything there. Only a bit of rebound to it, but. No, 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 no. You, you, you don't, so you put it on your back axle. When it comes off, it's getting a sample of what, what you're spreading, right? The calculator works out that proportion of it. And you, it's actually set up so the, it's, it will calculate whether you're using the GRDC one or the Bushel Plus one, that will take that proportion to work out what your loss is, yeah? The next, if you can do, is, as, ben, as Brett also said, is you could do a loss uh, test off your front. And that's going to get your other spread straight off um, what's being th thrown from the side, right? So you're looking more at your then um, your your total spread there in terms of your rotor. Okay. We got it's a it's a beautiful discussion, and I know I, I can see um, Andrew's giving me the hands up. We're running low on time, so um, I'm going to push on because it was a good lead into the front loss. We are going to go outside and talk about that. And happy to go through those in more detail. Um, so look, I might pass over to to, to Ben.